Well, Dr. Hernst Haeckel uh, is arguably the third most important evolutionist of the 1800s behind Charles Darwin and Thomas Huxley. Now, remember that Charles Darwin did not invent evolution. The concepts of evolution go back thousands of years. Uh, however, uh, Charles Darwin is the most notable named figure, but he actually learned his evolution from his father, Robert, his grandfather, Erasmus. And we really wouldn't know Charles Darwin that much except for Thomas Huxley, who was the one who promoted Darwin and evolutionary thought and became his bulldog in England. But Dr. Ernst Haeckel was a German evolutionist with an earned PhD. Now remember that Charles Darwin only had a Bachelor of Arts in Christian theology. But Dr. Haeckel had an earned PhD and he taught the universities in Germany. Uh, what happened? Charles Darwin published his book, Origin of the Species by Natural Selection in the fall of 1859. It became an instantly popular book because the English were at that time looking for a reason to believe there was no God. And of course, Darwin gave them a reason to believe there was no creator. Its popularity then transferred to being uh, put in different languages, European languages, for people to read it. And after it was translated into German, Ernst Haeckel would read his book. And having read Darwin, even though he was already an evolutionist, he became a militant, adamant evolutionist. And he would go on to actually perpetuate and propagate three great frauds. The first fraud I would mention is a creature he called Pithecanthropus allalis, meaning the speechless ape man. Now, he was a very good artist himself, but he didn't draw the Pithecanthropus allalis. He actually hired an artist to do it, but he actually hired an artist to draw what this creature would look like, male, female, and a baby. And he then went around Germany telling blue-collar Germans that this was the creature from which they had evolved. I think the picture is very interesting. I include it um, in my teachings. The male is standing up with his back to the audience and his head cocked over his right shoulder looking back at you. He has four times the hair of a gorilla, uh, taking a rather gorilla-like pose. But I think it's interesting that Dr. Haeckel, knowing he had a German audience and appealing to them, has a German handlebar mustache on the face of the male. The female is sitting down holding a baby, and she has a very long, sort of horse-like face. The baby you can't tell much about. Now this creature, Pithecanthropus allalis, Charles Darwin, Thomas Huxley, Ernst Haeckel, all believed that the only significant difference between apes and people was that we could talk and they couldn't. And so Pithecanthropus allalis is the speechless ape man. Haeckel simply made it up. We have never found one piece of physical evidence to support the existence of such a creature. The second uh, fraud that he perpetuated on people, he thought about the tree of life. Now Charles Darwin had invented a sort of stick figure tree of life. It was just a bare sketch concept. But Haeckel actually drew a, a tree of life, the first one that had everything there, more or less. And he had the top, of course, people and going on down other creatures. But his problem was that he didn't have a life form to put at the base of the tree, a single cell creature that had come from rocks and then evolved into people. And so he actually made up a single celled form of creature called a Monera or a Monoron. And he actually drew, because he was a very good artist, uh, several species of these single-celled creatures. Uh, and in one case, he actually showed the life cycle of one as it was being reproduced. And he would take these pictures around again, telling people that this was true. And Huxley even thought it was true, and he uh, even backed him. He found uh, some examples of things that had been found during dredgings of the Atlantic and said, oh, this is the Monera, the Monoron that Huxley had talked about. Charles Darwin believed that it was true, even used it in his book. And yet it was found out just a few years later that it was simply a precipitate uh, of the samples of mud being placed into the alcohol in the jar. It was not a living creature at all. And 
neither alive today nor in the fossil record have we ever found any single cell creature that looks anything like the drawings that Haeckel did. He simply made it up. And the third and final fraud that he perpetuated was called ontogeny begets phylogeny or embryonic recapitulation. There are several terms to, to do this, but he came up with an idea that what happens in the womb of your mother is that you go through the various evolutionary stages by which people came from a single cell creature. So that after your conception in your mother's womb, you became a jellyfish then you became a fish, then you became an amphibian, a reptile, a mammal, and you were only born human. And what he did was he had a series of drawings showing the embryos of various creatures. So the embryo of a salamander, the embryo of a chicken, a pig, supposedly a human, and said that at a certain stage they all looked very, very much alike. And in his drawings they did look very, very much alike. Haeckel actually stole the drawings of legitimate embryologists such as Hiss. Um, and what he did was he took an eraser and he erased lines that should have been left. He took a pencil, drew in lines that were never there. He changed the size of these embryo drawings, uh, some of them changing them by a factor of 10. And so what he did was he totally falsified the information. This fraud was discovered during his lifetime, and he was forced by everybody around him to finally admit that what he had drawn was not true. So we've known for over 100 years that these drawings were falsified and that his concept of embryonic recapitulation was a fraud. Yet, to even today, his drawings are being found in textbooks in schools around the world. And these drawings are being used by organizations such as Planned Parenthood to tell young women, well, you're not really aborting a baby, you're really just aborting a jellyfish. I myself saw these drawings in an elite high school in Karelia, which is an area of Russia near Finland. And when I showed the students what was the truth about them, I actually showed the drawings of Haeckel and they were in their textbook. And then I showed them photographs of the same embryos at the same stage of development that Haeckel said they were. And of course, they're radically different. And uh, it, it's a memory I will always have. After the class was over, a very striking young blonde haired uh, young lady student um, stood up, walked to the back of the class, looked down at her roughly 35-year-old teacher who had been trained that evolution was true, looked at her and said, and what are you going to teach us now? Showing that they got it, that Haeckel's drawings that they were being shown were simply not true. So Haeckel, though a, an educated man with an earned PhD, actually believed in evolution so strongly that he was willing to make up three great frauds to get people convinced and deceived that evolution is true, when in fact it isn't.